Hey everybody, this is Alessandro. Welcome back to my channel. I want to show you today how I help one of my students to understand this kind of motion where basically the character is striking a very strong poses and you have a very sharp movement. We don't want the animation to look too sharp, okay, too stiff, but at the same time, we don't want it to look too, too floaty, right? So we want the character to have the kind of sharp movement, right, with a bit of a shake in his body, maintaining the intensity, but at the same time, not looking too soft. So the very first things I did, I delete some of the keys done by the student previously. And the reason why, because I wanted to rework some of the poses, adjust the fist position, all right, adjusting maybe the, a little bit the arp, all right. And it's easier for me if rather than fixing someone else's work, going back and delete some of those keys, all right. And redo them very, very quickly. Okay, here I was adjusting the shoulder a little bit, you know, in, in some of the in-between. Again, maybe the very beginning didn't need to be perfect because I was mostly interested into the ending, right? And then here I started to work on the easy in, easy out using the twin machine tool uh, because I want to make sure that we have the right acceleration and deceleration, all right? So especially at the beginning, the movement needed to be a little bit slow, all right? And obviously when I do those things, I adjust very quickly the line of action, the up and down, I make sure that the feet is having the contact where it's supposed to have, right? And then I started to adjust uh, some of the arc, okay, for the pelvis. Usually after I do that, I go in the graph editor, I make sure everything is not just smooth, but he has the right acceleration, deceleration of where it needs to be. After all is done, I go after the, the final poses and started to add some movement. And I started with the hip movement, all right? I exaggerate a little bit of the up and down, giving it a little bit of a shake, all right, um, and obviously after I do that, I go back and readjust the um, the trajectory, right? As usual, as a second pass, I give uh, I go back to the uh, graph editor. I started to move keys, right? Because I don't want things to move uh, all together. That's when things started to look very robotic. Even for the same controller, you don't want the same access to move at the same time. Maybe the up and down moves a little bit early and the left to right movement uh, moves a little bit different and has a different easy in, easy out, right? And as you can see, uh, at the moment, I only did the, the COG, right? And when I'm happy with it, I start with the hip controller, for example, where I wanted to have a side-to-side -side rotation with the Z-axis, right? Um, I want, again, I want to make sure that the hip doesn't feel too stiff, right? Because if the body's coming down uh, very quickly, right? I want to have the, the hip snapping, not too much, because then the character starts to look very feminine, um, but uh, I want to give, again, a little bit of a shake, okay, to support the COG movement. Uh, here, very quickly, I have to clean up a little bit the feet because they were a bit too floaty, so I just use the in-between to clean up the feet. Uh, I go back to the hips, so sometimes you'll see me going back and forth with the same controller, because once I, I clean up other controller, I realize maybe I need to push the, the hip a little bit more. I wanted to exaggerate the hip rotation here, for example, side-to-side -side, um, uh, rotation. So I was exploring a little bit with the, uh, with the graph editor, right? And now you can feel the rotation of the hip uh, moving forward. Uh, after this is done, I move to the upper chest because again, I you know is doing this very sharp movement with the with the arms. So obviously this is, will reflect on a stronger movement on the chest compared to the hip, right? And so I started with the side to side rotation, and as you can see here, um, the difficult part was to make it bounce the chest when it moves left to right, not too subtle, but not to the point that look like a spring effect. If you if you know what I mean, right? Uh, and then obviously I do a little bit with the up and down rotation as well. You see now I started to feel very nicely because you feel the snap in the chest, all right? Uh, once this is done, I, I, I started to adjust the head and I realized that the head, for example, he, he rotate towards the, the, the right side of the screen at the very last moment um, till a frame, I think, uh, uh, the middle part of the animation, the head is kind of rotating towards the center and then at the end... Uh, switch very quickly, rotate very quickly to the right side. And again, the difficult part here was just to not to make it too disconnect from the rest of the body. And I have to work very closely with the easy in, easy out, but not make it too obvious or else the head started to look very, very floaty. All right. So I continue to work. I continue to adjust this part until I was happy with the result. 
Then I move on the on the arms. Okay, I started with a very simple easy in, easy out with an overshoot with the arms. I select all the controllers at the same time and I overshoot back the arms and, and, and forward, right? I spline very quickly. And then in order not to make it too floaty, guys, what I did, I started to add some um, some easy in, easy out, right? First of all, I checked the original result to see if I'm going to the right direction. And then I do this acceleration with a, a twin machine. If you don't do that, um, it doesn't matter how much you're improving your overshoot, things will start to look very, very even and very smooth, right? So easy in, easy out is the key to make things to look very sharp, right? And now you're seeing me doing basically exactly the same with the other arms, where it's pushing back the elbow. And as you can see, maybe the first attempt, I pushed a little bit too much. It felt like a little bit too springy. Um, so I need to reduce when the, the elbow is, is going back up, right? So that's what you see me doing right now, messing around with the keys, guys. Uh, one important thing, one important message I want to give all of you when you watch my tutorial, um, for me, what I want to show you is the technique, the intent behind this motion, right? Because I want you to be able to apply this one for different animation, right? Maybe you are uh, um, you you want to apply this one with a different animation with a different poses, so it's completely useless that you try to copy frame by frame what I'm trying to do. Try to copy my graph editor because it's not gonna fit, right? What I want you to understand is understand the intent, the motivation why I do certain things, and then you can apply to your own animation, right? And and maybe again, you know, you wanna try maybe things to do a little bit different. Maybe you wanna exaggerate a little bit more. Um, maybe a little bit more subtle because the camera is very close to the character and you want to reduce a little bit of the movement. Maybe you want to exaggerate the shoulder and stuff like that, okay? Um, so one of this stuff, leave it up to you. I want to adjust to get the, uh, the intent uh, behind this one, all right? So here, for example, you see me going back and tweaking the hip and the chest because I felt like I could have pushed it a little bit more. So I was experimenting a little bit to the side-to-side -side movement and, uh, and I wanted to have the kind of uh, sharp again, but not too sharp. So when I do this kind of stuff, as soon as I started to polish and clean up the other part of the body, sometimes I always go back and see how can I um, adjust the rest of it. I go back on the feet, on the knees, on the hip, right? Because I want to continue to improve it until I find um, the, the right balance. Sometimes things look okay when you're focusing only on one limb, but then when you start to polish the rest and the entire body comes along all together, you realize, okay, now the hip is not visible anymore. I need to exaggerate it. And the chest maybe is not as strong, maybe it's a bit too snappy or whatever it is that you wanna um, modify uh, again, okay? So, but overall, you can see the result is started to get there. And this part here now I was wanted to do, I wanted to have a little bit of a shake on the knee as well because I felt like the knee was a little bit too stiff, right? And so when you're having this strong movement with your, with your body, right, uh, it will affect a little bit the knee as well. And you, you're not just gonna have just the body movement and the leg completely lock, right? Uh, you wanna feel that kind of shake, as you can see, very subtle, but just that make things to look uh, quite, quite good on the, on the knee as well. All right, guys? Uh, yeah, overall, this is done for today. I hope you enjoyed this small tutorial and you can learn something from it and see you next time. Ciao, guys.